Model engineering for beginners, this is part 23. Is it really worth it? Making the best of a bad job. This clip shows a very nice example of a very badly made steam engine. On the other hand, this clip shows a really good example of a beautifully made steam engine and it's working quite well and running very sweetly. The valve timing is as close as I can possibly get it and it sounds beautiful. This thing on the other hand is a disaster area, so what's wrong with it? Currently I'm making a video series about resurrecting this old beam engine. It was one of a job lot of engines that I bought a while back and I sold the rest of them but I didn't sell this one because it's too bad to sell. And why is that? Well for starters the cylinder's in the wrong place, as you can see it's not in the middle of the casting. The column that supports the beam is in the centre of the base casting, so as you can easily work out there's a bit of a problem. The beam itself cannot possibly line up with the piston rod. So the builder of the engine had a brilliant idea. He moved the position of the main bearings on top of the column over to one side. I knew that this was a bad engine when I first started it, but I went ahead with it and this is as far as I've got. My videos are designed for beginners, so this is a good lesson for a beginner. We all make mistakes and I make plenty of them. I don't put all of them on the videos. But because of the way this beam engine is made, I thought it was a perfect subject for a model engineering beginners episode. As you can see, the holes are not in a good place on top of the column. I could do it this way. I could fill in the holes and remount the bearings right on the edge of the column. That wouldn't be good either. Someone's already thought of that because there are some filled in holes further out on the top of the column. These holes are filled with filler and with metal it's not the best way to do things. You can fill metal by using other metal. And here's the principle. I'm using Loctite 603 which is a bearing retainer which will very tightly retain these four countersunk bolts in the holes in the top of the column. As I was screwing these countersunk bolts or set screws or whatever you want to call them into the holes I noticed that a plug of filler was coming out of the bottom. So another mistake had been made, the builder drilled these holes all the way through the column which wasn't really necessary but such is life. And here to prove the point is a plug of filler on top of the column. Here's the last of the set screws or countersunk bolts being screwed into place. And now I think it's time to remove the column. I put this column in actually the wrong way around because when you put it in the other way around the studs are very tight in the holes. But I think the other way around was the way the builder had planned it to be. Anyway, back to the job. I'm now sawing off the bolt heads. For this job I'm using my old Draper metal cutting bandsaw. This is not a good machine but it's 35 years old and it's done a lot of work so I can't complain. The stand that it sits on is a bit feeble but it works. Over now to the lathe. I've fitted the four jaw chuck and now I'm going to tightly clamp the base of the column into the chuck. I need to get this part to revolve concentrically because at the other end there is a centre. The point being is, it's the centre that needs to be concentric, not the column. The column is just as it was cast and it's not very true. But before I fitted the live centre into the centre hole, I made sure that was running true. I could have done this a much easier way. All I had to do was carefully cut off the bolt heads and then use the linisher to clean off the bolt heads. Then I would be able to mount the bearings on top of the column. But there are already several holes in this column in the wrong place. Four of them are now filled with the metal from the bolts and the other four are just filled with some sort of body filler. So I'm going to do it the hard way. Really, I could just linish the top and paint it and that would be the end of it. But no, I'm going to do it a different way. I'm going to fit two metal plates on top of the column through which the main bearings will be bolted down to the column, giving it added strength. And at the moment I'm trying to get a perfectly flat surface to mount these metal plates. The real answer to this job is to buy a new column from Stuart Models and remachine it from scratch. And that's what I would personally do. If I make a mistake of this magnitude, I put the part in the bin. But then I wouldn't have a video showing you how to repair the holes that are drilled in the wrong place in the top of a Stuart beam engine column. And I freely admit I've done this many times, not on a beam engine column, but I've made a mistake and I've plugged the hole and re-drilled it. And as I said before, we all make mistakes, said the Dalek climbing off the dustbin. 
and the hedgehog climbing off the hairbrush. Making a successful professional repair is not a problem. Most of the things I do are resurrections of engines. Sometimes they are rebuilds, sometimes they are just sympathetic restorations. Oh yes, and I forgot to mention, two of the holes in the side of the column don't have threads in them. The holes were drilled in the wrong place and have been elongated with a file and they're a right mess. So what I'm going to do is drill the holes a lot deeper using a 7 seconds of an inch diameter twist drill which is tapping size for quarter by 40 threads per inch. Then I'm going to make and fit two quarter by 40 threads per inch plugs which I will screw into the holes. I should have mentioned this earlier, I'll mention it now. When you're plugging holes in metal, it's a good idea to try and use the same kind of metal that you're plugging. And why is this the case? Well, think about it. If you're drilling a hole in the junction between the new piece of metal and the old piece of metal, if one of the pieces of metal is steel and the other one is cast iron, the drill is going to wander towards the cast iron, so it will be very difficult to drill it accurately. I've used steel bolts to plug the holes at the top, but they're not going to get in the way of the bearings. Famous last words, I'm pretty sure they're not going to do anyway. Plus, the thing that I didn't mention earlier, the two metal plates that sit on top of the column, which I haven't fitted yet, are going to be pre-drilled to take the bearings, so will also act as a drill guide for the drill when I drill the cast iron. It's always good to think ahead, and in model engineering, thinking ahead is of paramount importance. Before I make these videos, I actually sit and think about what I'm going to do. I don't use a script. The words appear when I look at the pictures. It's more difficult than you think, speaking continuously whilst looking at pictures and describing what you're doing in the pictures. In this clip, I'm threading the holes in the side of the column, quarter by 40 threads per inch. I drill the holes quite deep, so this will be a really solid plug. And it needs to be really, because it's holding a fairly vital part of the beam engine and I don't want it to wobble about at any time. Once I'd finished threading the holes, I turned it upside down to get rid of all the chippings, and now I'm screwing in some brass plugs that I made. All I did was thread a piece of brass bar, quarter by 40 threads per inch, but before I chopped it off on the bandsaw, I used the bandsaw blade to make a screw slot in the top, then I chopped off two of them, and here I am screwing them in position with some Loctite 603. If it was a proper engineer, the next part of the job would have been to put the column in the milling machine and mill off the top, but no, I use my belt sander. The one inch belt sander is very good for things like this. And because it's just there, ready to work, it's quicker than setting up the milling machine. In this clip, I'm screwing the entablature at the other side, because I want to make sure that the part I'm going to fit lines up with the one at the other side, if you see what I mean. For this job, I'm going to use a transfer punch. This will transfer the positions of the holes from the part to the positions on the column where I need to drill and thread the holes to receive the bolts that hold everything in place. Once I got the positions of the holes using the transfer punch, I verified the positions by looking down the holes from the part that's going to be bolted on there. A better idea is to drill and thread just one hole and bolt up the part, then once again use the transfer punch through the hole in the original component to make a mark on the brass plug and that way everything will line up. I didn't actually do it that way, I did both the holes at one go and everything seems to be okay, but I like to live life dangerously, life on the edge, because it's the only excitement to get these days. Parts of this video will feature heavily in an episode for the series How to Rebuild a Stuart Models Beam Engine. To find this series or any other series, the easiest way to do it is to go to my website and click on Video Playlists. That way you can get really quick access to the series and videos that you'd like to watch. But for now, this concludes the Model Engineering for Beginners episode. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.